A quilt is three feet by six feet. If there is 22 square feet of fabric available to use as a border around the quilt, how wide should the border be? Assume all of the fabric must be used. Referring to the model below, the red rectangle represents the quilt. The blue region represents the border around the quilt. So because the quilt is three feet by six feet, this length is three feet, and this length is six feet. And now we don't know the width of the border, but it is of uniform width. Let's let x equal the width of the border, which means this length is x feet, and so is this length at each corner. And now let's work on determining the dimensions of the outer rectangle, or the quilt, including the border. If this length is three, and this length is x, and this length is x, this outer length must be three plus x plus x, or three plus two x feet. This length here must be six plus x plus x, or six plus two x feet. From here, we can determine the area of the border by determining the area of the outer rectangle and subtracting the area of the inner rectangle. And this area must be equal to the 22 square feet of fabric that is used for the border. And because the area of a rectangle is equal to length times width, the area of the outer rectangle, or the area of the quilt and the border, must be equal to the quantity six plus two x times the quantity three plus two x. So this gives us the area of the quilt and the border, or the area of the outer rectangle, and now we want to subtract the area of the quilt, or the area of the inner rectangle, which would be three times six. This leaves us with the area of the border, which must equal 22 square feet, and therefore this is equal to 22. And now if we solve this equation for x, we can determine the width of the border. For the first step, let's curl the parentheses on the left side. When multiplying two binomials, we always have four products. We first distribute the six, then distribute the two x. Six times three equals 18. Two, six times two x equals 12 x, so we have plus 12 x. And now we distribute two x, two x times three equals six x, which gives us plus six x, and two x times two x equals four x squared, which gives us plus four x squared. And we have minus three times six, which gives us minus 18 equals 22. And now we simplify the left side of the equation. 18 minus 18 is equal to zero. We have four x squared. 12x plus 6x equals 18x, so plus 18x equals 22. Notice how we have a quadratic equation. Let's set this equal to zero and solve. To set the equation equal to zero, we subtract 22 on both sides. Simplifying, we have 4x squared plus 18x minus 22 equals zero. There are several methods to solve a quadratic equation. For this example, while this is factual, let's solve this using the quadratic formula. Let's work on this on the next slide. So we could apply the quadratic formula in this form, where a equals four, b equals 18, and c equals negative 22, but instead, let's first factor out the greatest common factor of two. If we factor two out of the left side, we're left with two times the quantity two x squared plus nine x minus 11 equals zero. In this form, this equation equals zero when the quadratic inside the parentheses is equal to zero, which means in this form, we can apply the quadratic formula where a equals two, b equals nine, and c equals negative 11. However, if we want to, we can also divide both sides of the equation by two. Notice by doing this on the left, two divided by two equals one, the left side simplifies to two x squared plus nine x minus 11. On the right side, zero divided by two is still zero. So now applying the quadratic formula in this form, we can use a equals two, b equals nine, and c equals negative 11. Let's go ahead and perform this substitution. Performing this substitution, we have x equals 
negative b is negative 9. And then we have plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is the square of 9, or 9 squared, minus 4 times a times c is minus 4 times 2 times negative 11. All this is divided by 2 times a, which is 2 times 2. And now we begin simplifying. We have x equals, in the numerator, negative 9 plus or minus the square root of the square of 9 is 81. And we have minus 4 times 2 times negative 11. 4 times 2 times negative 11 equals negative 88. Minus negative 88 is equivalent to plus 88. We can also think of this as negative 4 times 2 times negative 11, which equals positive 88, and therefore we have plus 88. The denominator is 2 times 2, which equals 4. Next, 81 plus 88 equals 169. In the numerator, we have negative 9 plus or minus the square root of 169. I'll divide it by 4. 169 is equal to 13 squared, and therefore the square root of 169 simplifies perfectly to 13, which gives us x equals the quantity negative 9 plus or minus 13 divided by 4. So one solution is x equals the quantity negative 9 plus 13 divided by 4. Well, negative 9 plus 13 equals positive 4. This simplifies to 4 divided by 4, which equals 1. Or we have x equals the quantity negative 9 minus 13 divided by 4 which equals negative 22 divided by 4, which equals negative 5.5. So both of these are solutions to the algebraic equation shown here or here. However, we know x is a length, and therefore the length cannot be negative, which means for the application problem, our solution is x equals 1. Going back to our first slide, we now know if we have 22 square feet of fabric to form a border, around a three foot by six foot quilt, the width of the border should be one foot. I hope you found this helpful.